Hi, I'm Dr. Donna Chisholm. We're at Royal University Hospital in the fluoroscopy suite in the radiology department. We're just getting uh, ready to start with a hysterosalpingogram. We are using a hysterosalpingogram to investigate the uh, for patency of the uh, oviducts, the fallopian tubes, and also to um, see if there are any um, polyps or fibroids. Um, typically, an HSG is not the best way in which to look for polyps or fibroids, and they don't usually show up unless they're gigantic. Anyway, this is my instrument tray here. I've already loaded my ICD-300 um, radiopaque dye into the syringe. Um, and I've, I've gotten as many bubbles as I can out of the, out of the um, syringe. And I've got um, a prepping solution. I've never needed to use a pair of scissors yet. Um, single tooth tenacula. Um, the uh, uh, sound, of, I don't think I've ever actually needed to use this to put a camera in place, and you don't really need a very big opening in the cervix to push dye in, so um, I don't think it's ever important to sound the uterus. But this is really helpful if the cervix is pointing downwards and I need to lift it up to allow me to see the anterior lip and put the tenaculum on at the 12 o'clock position. Um, this uh, cannula happens to have a second side arm, um, which some days is in way. Um, we need to um, block this, occlude it manually as well as using the stopcock because sometimes it fails. The stopcock sometimes fails. Um, this um, rubber stopper um, is, has now been replaced primarily with uh, silicone, so they tend to not be as uh, malleable as this, you know, like this one. We, there are um, holes on the side of the cannula, and I want this to be just enough to get inside, but not enough to go inside the urine cavity. Um, because oftentimes the cervix is quite patchous, um, particularly in some of the secondary infertility, that I would rather not have this much of the cannula um, potentially going inside. So I've um, already prepared my speculum by putting it under the warm water. I think if we're using a metal speculum, that's mandatory. And then I put a bit of muco on. And we're going to uh, start this examination. So you can feel my touch. I need you to move your um, knees out to the side, just a bit. Just a touch more, that's excellent. Now, once we've got the instruments in place, I'm actually gonna move your ankle a little bit off to the side here, because it makes it a little bit more stable for your legs, but I've got a really easy ability to see what I need to see here. Now, I only uncover what I need to see, not someone's whole body. I think that is um, plenty enough, and, uh, more respectful for the patient. When I put a spiculum in, because I've got a bed here, I'm either going to put it in on an angle this way or an angle this way, whichever is more convenient. Now, I'm, you will feel me touch your skin right now. I'm touching your knee and I'm going to put the spiculum against you. And you need to tell me if it's uh, too warm or too cool. Okay, so next I'm going to touch the, your labia, the skin, and move the skin off to the side. So I can put the speculum in place. And this is a sidearm speculum, which I will demonstrate in just a second. Now I can see the cervix really clearly. Now this is hard to go through, but it's going to be surprising how quickly it's moving. Now first I'm going to um, wash your cervix with some cleaning solution. And then I'm going to do that one more time. And the walls of the vagina. Okay. So I'm going to be placing the single tooth tenaculum on the anterior lip of the cervix. at the 12 o'clock position. It needs to be a good enough um, 
uh, to be able to pull the uterus and straighten the uterus out if need be. So my cannula is um, in, the, in my dominant arm. And I'm going to do this so that I can see the, the opening of the cervix when I'm putting the cannula in place. That's really important. And then the next thing I do is I want to hold this instrument like so in one hand while I remove the speculum. Because the, if you remove the speculum, the patient will be much, much more comfortable. Now this happens to be a sidearm speculum so where the sidearm is open, so you'll feel me moving the speculum. And when I do so, it always feels like it's kind of glued in place. It can work its way around the, um, um, around the instruments. Now the next thing we're going to do is make sure the radiologist knows what we're doing. And we are not going to inject until I see the radiologist's eyes and signal to him that we are ready to go, please turn on the fluoro and don't, I'm, as has been my experience in the past, we do not turn off the fluoro until we are done. The very first part of fluoroscopy is going to allow us to see the uterine cavity contour, so it's extremely important that when we do our first injection that we pull on the cervix to straighten out the uterine cavity um, and that when we do our injection we inject only a small bit of dye. Um, so that it just barely coats the inside of the uterine cavity. We've gotten the images of her oviducts and, and uterine cavity. Now I need to see that there has been no loculation of dye sequestered someplace in the pelvis. So I'm going to push the cervix in while I'm watching and pull back down again. Sometimes I do it a second time just to see that the dye has dispersed all through her pelvis and abdomen, lower abdomen. And I see that's worked well. Okay, our images are great. Your tubes appear to be open. I'm just going to remove my instruments now. So the first thing is I'm going to remove the cannula and just lay it down here for a sec. Now I'm going to undo the tenaculum, move the tip side to side so that I can remove it. I'm going to grab my leftover gauze, which is perfect. I'm going to put it on your skin to collect any drips before you are able to get up and, and, and move. Now you can keep your legs again. That's great, they're your own. And I need to thank you very much for not putting your hands on your tummy while we were taking pictures. Had you done that, we would have taken really nice pictures of your fingers. Um, but uh, this way we've got really good images of your reproductive organs.